Hey, Space Commanders, it's Spatula here, back for another insane raving about the terrible space truths the developers don't want you to know. Now today I want to think uh, outside the bubble and look into the black for answers. Now, as many of you Commanders are aware, not all systems are built equal, and across the bubble there are several rather exclusive places that require special permits to access before they open up their legs and show you the goodies. The most notable of these is the Cradle of Humanity itself, the Soul System. Of course, some explorers will note that outside of the bubble, there are many permit-locked areas of space, wide swaths long suspected to house extraterrestrial or artificial life forms the Pilots' Federation doesn't want us discovering. But no permits are so odd or specific as one. That's right, people. Today I'm talking about Polaris. And what is a Polaris, you ask? Why, none other than the Lode Star itself. Polaris was once upon a time referred to as the North Star by old Earth ground lovers back in the formative days of space travel. Resting gently on the tip of the Little Dipper, it was once a beacon for sailors to navigate by, back in the days when mapping wasn't monopolized by one sinister corporation. Now, there are some who say our universe itself is only a simulation that began in 1984, but no matter what you believe, Polaris had real significance to Earthlings back in those olden times. Now, of course, these days, tourists to that polluted placenta of humanity that is Earth look to a different star for North, most likely Gamma Cephei, called Alri these days by modern federalationalists, though it'll be another 700 years or so before it really hits the spot, if by then people will still sail on the toxic oceans of Earth. But before Polaris, it was Kokab, then Thuban, and long after Alri has had its day, in another 50 centuries, it'll be Alpha Cygni's turn to let the Earth know where it's up is at. So really, that North Star is really... It's more of a title, like President or CEO. They each have their day as the Earth Royal Crown Jewel, and then move into obscurity. But why permit lock Polaris? Well, many assume to this day that Polaris is the place where the original Santa Claus, who ruled the North Pole during the age of Polaris, is buried. But that's complete bullshit. Everyone knows I found Santa's grave in the Santa Muerte system, and brought him back to life as a chocolate clone monster a few Christmases ago. Don't believe everything they spoon-feed you, kids. Santa is out there. Leave a glass of milk on the Christmas Eve, and if there are chocolate tracks and streaks all over the house in the morning, well, you either visited you or your dog has buttworms. So what's really going on here? To understand the truth of Polaris, we need to look no further back than the 3150s, or the 3250s, depending on how you subscribe to revisionist history. That's right, it's time to take a trip down Lower Alley and see how messed up this gets. Now, history tells us one Commander John Jameson, whose remains are now a popular tourist destination, delivered the mycoid virus to infect the enemy and end the First Thargoid War, not knowing he was an instrument of genocide. Of course, Jameson was killed by Inra for the information he possessed, leaving behind a log filled with regret and sorrow as he crash-landed without rebuy. His grave, discovered only a few years back, replete with beacons telling his tale. But who put the beacons there? Did Jameson really write his own ending? Or could Inra be editing history to cover their tracks? Well, what I can't confirm is rumors, but I've heard tale that in the 3250s, an alternate history book known as First Encounters, a John Jameson Jr. stole the cure for the microid virus and delivered it to the Thargoids in Polaris beginning secret talks between the Goids and the Alliance, right around the time the famous explorer Mick Turner died. Now, upon entering Polaris, Jameson reportedly found himself transported to a faraway region of space, deep in Thargoid territories, a system called Miyaki, their whole world. It's uh, said he was flying a Thargoid ship around after that, but all known evidence has been redacted, and there's no way to confirm the truth. So which is it? Did John Jameson deliver mycoid, or did John Jameson Jr. deliver the cure? Or did the son right the wrongs of the father a hundred years later? Only we haven't found his grave yet because it's on Raxla. Yeah, well I'll have to figure out a way to ask Lori Jameson all this one day. She's apparently their living descendant. But the mere fact that Polaris is permit locked leads me to believe that JJ Jr. did deliver the cure to there, and that this lore may not be entirely lost. Could it be that there's still a gateway within Polaris that leads deep within Thergoid territory or unlocks the COL-70 sector? Could this be, I dare say it, the location of Raxla? Staring at us this whole time, sitting behind a permit wall while we check everywhere else but the obvious. 
Well, there haven't been any Thargoid sightings in the area, so perhaps long ago, Inra or Galkop or the Dark Wheel got into Polaris and found Raxla, a Thargoid portal to another place. To this day, they use Polaris as a testing ground for their witchcraft experiments. Or worse still, maybe they locked it off because one of those experiments went wrong and unleashed a monster. Either way, that might be why they deny the real events of the 2250s and why the history of John Jameson Jr. is still under wraps. The only answer will be found if we get into Polaris, people. So, if there is something important there in Polaris, how do you get the permit to go there? And you've just stumbled upon one of my top mysteries of the galaxy there, my friends. You see, Polaris has no faction to please, no humans to speak to, no doorbell to ring, no customer service to call. Some say that the Dark Wheel faction in Shinrata Desra might hold the key. Others say the faction is a front to steer you away from places like Polaris, the real seat of the elite within the Dark Wheel. Well, perhaps if you scan the right beacons or become CQC Elite, you'll get a mysterious invite in your mail. To this date, we can only speculate. But one thing is for sure. No one is going to get into Polaris if people don't keep looking for the key. I know this mystery investigator hasn't given up hope that the pieces are out there for us to find. Anyway, I've given you the information. It's up to you what you do with it. Fly, Dangus! Mm -hmm.